if you just buy an iPhone 17 Pro for your content creation, then you're gonna wanna stay locked into this video because I'm about to show you an insane setup that's gonna drastically increase your workflow. What's up, my name's Royce and welcome to my channel where I talk about all things film and tech. And today we're gonna talk about the iPhone 17 Pro. No, this is not an iPhone 17 Pro review of the phone or the cameras. Plenty of videos already doing that. I'm sure you guys have watched a ton of them. But what this video is gonna talk about is a really cool and unique feature that you could utilize with your iPhone 17 Pro to shoot your content, like how I'm shooting this YouTube video right now. And so what's happening right now is I'm live syncing the footage that is recording me right this second into DaVinci Resolve on my computer. On my computer here, you will see this clip and you'll see this little red record symbol. And if I click on here, we could preview. This is what's happening live right this second. Even at the end here, footage is still going to be added. As you can see, the marker keeps moving backwards because we're still recording. And what's cool is as soon as I'm done recording, my footage is already in my computer, I can start editing. Now here's the thing, I am shooting ProRes RAW because it's new. I'm experimenting with it, why not? So I'm still recording, and let me uh, I'll take out my trusty iPhone 13 mini here to record this part. So this is my iPhone 17 Pro. I'm still recording to an external SSD so I can record that ProRes RAW. So the footage that is syncing to my computer right now are proxy files. And so again, this is part of the really cool part. I can be sending proxy files all the way to my computer from my iPhone live right now over Wi-Fi, but you could do this over LTE as well while the ProRes RAW footage is being recorded into my external drive. Now, technically this is also able to sync the full res files as well, but since there is the limitation of only recording ProRes files to an external SSD, that's why, you know, I'm kind of recording to both. But once all that footage is on there, I start editing. I can plug in my SSD that I have here into my computer and link the proxies with the ProRes RAW file so it can get that full resolution. The intention is I'm recording this all in one take uh, just so you can kind of get that real live raw footage there. And then going back to the computer here, you can see we are still recording. Look at all the footage that has been added since we started. And to add to the dopeness of this setup, I'm actually controlling my iPhone 17 Pro through my iPad mini with the Blackmagic camera app for the iPad. And I've set this up as a controller and my iPhone 17 Pro as a remote camera that I can then manipulate here from my iPad so I can trigger recordings, change settings, everything right from here. I can get that live preview so I can have this off to the side, hit record, record to my iPhone, sends to my computer. Let's go. So I'll stop recording this clip now because I want to get into the next section, which is how to actually set this all up if you guys are curious for yourselves. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to blackmagicdesign.com and set up a Blackmagic Cloud account. And we do that by clicking on this little cloud icon on the top right where it says log in. It'll take us to the Blackmagic Cloud part of the website and then select create a free account. Then you'll put all your information in, hit sign up. And yes, you can have a free account. Caveat though, it only comes with two gigabytes of storage in the cloud. You can see here my plan, I have 500 gigs of storage, two project libraries, and a bunch of other stuff, presentations, members. If you want to know more about Blackmagic Cloud as a whole, I have a dedicated video where I break down how to use this as a solar user. A lot of people think you need a big team to use it, but that's actually not true. You can use it by yourself and still get a lot of benefit. So this is a price breakdown. You see I have 500 gigs and I'm at $12.50 a month. But this thing goes all the way up to what? One petabyte, which is like $15,000 a month. We're not going to do that. That's crazy. But my 500 gigs. And honestly, I can remove this second project library. I thought I would need it, but so far I haven't needed to use it. And if I do that, that actually drops me down to $750 a month with 500 gigs, which gives me a little bit of wiggle room to go up to a terabyte, which would put me at $15 a month, which is not insane at all, considering what you're getting for this. Now, if you wanted, you could actually rent DaVinci Resolve Studio license through this, which is an extra $30 a month. If you only need it for a certain amount of time, you don't want to pay up front for DaVinci Resolve Studio. This is a way you can kind of do that and rent it when you need it. All right, but once you set up what you want, then you'll go over to the cloud tab when creating a project. You'll create your cloud project, title it, choose a location for the media. Now, this is important to note, allow multiple simultaneous users. I do this even if I'm working on stuff by myself. And the reason being is if I'm editing on, say, my laptop, but then I wanna open up the project on my iPad for whatever reason. If I had forgotten to close it on my laptop, I cannot open that project on my iPad. If I have this turned on, allow multiple simultaneous users, that allows me to open up the project on my iPad, even if it's still open on my laptop, and it just reads it as two separate users trying to access the project at the same time. So that's ultimately what the goal is, 
to allow multiple people to be working on a project together. But I use it by myself just in case I forget to close on one device or the other because I like to go back and forth. And this next one, synchronized storage with Blackmagic Cloud. I have this set up to sync proxies only. Right now, shooting ProRes RAW, those files are large. So if I had sync proxies and originals, that could take up a lot of storage really quick. Probably the most important setting, you want to have allow remote camera access because this is what's going to allow our iPhone to sync and live stream that footage into DaVinci Resolve to then edit right after we're done. And then we'll open up a project I, I had already created and what I'm using for this video. You can see all my proxy files right there. And next I'll show you how to set up your iPhone so all that footage gets sent into your DaVinci Resolve project. Now on your iPhone, you wanna open up the Blackmagic camera app. Once that's open, we'll go over to settings. First thing you wanna do, you wanna go over to record. For codec, make sure Apple ProRes RAW is selected. Well, if you intend to shoot ProRes RAW, you don't have to have this on. You can do Apple ProRes 422, H.265, 264, whatever you want to do. Choice is yours. But if you want to do ProRes RAW like me, this is the setup that you need to do. I have that selected. Resolution, open gate, if that's what you want to do as well. Or you can select 4K, color space, Apple Log 2, and you're good to go in that section. Then we'll go over to media. Make sure record proxy is turned on and upload clips, we want proxies only, and we want live sync turned on as well. And auto upload to selected project, make sure that's turned on as well. And if you want, if you are concerned about accidentally using your cellular data, or you don't want to touch it at all, you can enable upload only over Wi-Fi. But I'll leave that off. And then save clips too. If you're doing ProRes RAW, you want to make sure your SSD is selected. Then you want to go down to Blackmagic Cloud. They'll have you sign in. And then once you're signed in, you can go to your project library and then you can select which projects that you've already created. If you don't have anything created yet, this won't have anything. So that's why I did the step creating the project first. Then we'll see it in here. I see mine iPhone 17 cloud live sync. Make sure that's turned on so I have access to it. And then you want to go over to remote camera control. Make sure this is turned on. This is how we'll be able to control the phone from the iPad. Make sure that's turned on and then it is selected as remote camera. So use this phone as remote camera or your phone can also be a controller to control another phone if you wanted to. But I'll set it remote camera. You can choose your camera name. You can choose a password and then camera available for control and monitor. If you only just want to monitor the footage on your iPad, you can do that and just select monitor only. And that's it. Now you should be good to go. Actually, no, I'm sorry. There's one more step you need to make sure you do so that the footage that's being recorded is sent to the right project. If you have multiple projects available to sync to, you want to go down to media and under your cloud libraries, you want to make sure the right project is selected. So mine is iPhone 17 cloud live sync that is selected. You can see here the clips I've already recorded are viewable right here. Now we hit camera and we're good to go. So I'm going to mount this up and now we'll go over to the iPad and show you the settings that you need to do to set that part up. So now in the iPad, we'll go to settings and all we care about here is the remote camera control section and under remote camera control, make sure that's turned on and then use this iPad as we'll select controller and now we're good. Now, if you have multiple iPhones that you would like to control from the iPad, you can do that as well. Just go down here where it says sync record across cameras, turn that on to make sure all your cameras start recording at the same time. You can also sync your recordings to the iPad if you want. You also have high remote camera video feed or dim remote cameras on record. But now we'll go back to the camera tab. These little three dots here on the left side, I guess they're on the right side too. Tap on that. Nope, that's different. Those are the function buttons. So the three dots on the left side, tap on that. This last tab here at the bottom, tap that. And now available phone cameras, we'll select our iPhone 17 Pro. And if I had multiple, I would just make sure that synchronized record is selected, but I only have one, so we're all good. And now you can see my iPhone feed right here. So now I'm good to go, and I just have to hit record. Got my trusty iPhone 13 mini out again. So I'll place it right here, my iPad, where I'm monitoring it. And yep, it fell. There we go. So now I'm going to hit record. Boom iPhone's now recording. And then on my screen here, you see the clip pop up right there. We're live, baby. So I'm just gonna keep recording on my iPhone 17 Pro to finish this video out because this is also a test for me to see if the iPhone 17 Pro is just good enough to be my main YouTube camera because it has the multiple lenses. I can zoom in at the different angles that I want. Don't have to worry about all this other extra gear. You literally just plop it on. Now, if you're shooting ProRes RAW, 
you are limited to only three. You get the 13 millimeter, 24 and 100. I'm at the 13 millimeter. So if you want that super wide, here you are. I gotta stop the recording though if I wanna switch it. So I'm gonna stop it. Now back in the 24 millimeter, stop it again. And then we'll go to 100 millimeter, super easy. I don't know if uh, 100 millimeters is the way to go right here, but you have the options, no swapping lenses. The phone makes things too easy, right? And then now syncing over here into DaVinci Resolve wirelessly, ah, man. And again, I still have to plug in my drive because I'm doing ProRes RAW, but if I'm just doing H.265, I would just sync the original media files into uh, DaVinci Resolve and just start editing, be ready to go. And I don't even have to plug anything up or transfer anything. That is absolutely amazing and will speed up workflows immensely. Now this should just me in the studio using it like this. Say you're out in the field shooting BTS or say it's your main camera for your short film and you're filming and you want your editor to start working on stuff so you can look at dailies and everything as soon as you get home. This is the setup, right? This is how you can do it. And since the iPhone has cellular built in, you don't have to worry about bringing another device or worrying about Wi-Fi signals being strong enough. It's all built in right there. So as long as you have service, you're good to go to start syncing up those media files. That's why I feel like this is insane to me. This is a futuristic type setup here, right? Where everything is just easy. Everything's wireless. We're shooting on our phones. It's great quality. I'm just telling you, just try it out, test it out for yourself. See if you like it. I really feel like we're finally at that point where the iPhone is about to take over your main camera, especially for setups like this for YouTube content creation. Film cameras are film cameras. We know, man, those are safe. But for stuff like this, this might be the new go-to. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I haven't color graded this yet. This could look like trash. But I don't know. You guys tell me. Let me know what you think of this setup. Do you find it useful? Do you think you can utilize it for your workflow? Do you think it would speed it up? Are you planning on using the iPhone 17 Pro for your content to shoot YouTube? Definitely let me know because I'm really curious because it's always existed, right? Shooting stuff on your iPhone. It's always been a thing. But now I feel like it makes more sense more than ever just from like outside of the niche people who are willing to do it. I feel like anybody can now just grab their phone and make things happen, but do it in a super dope and professional way like this. But that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel. Really means a lot. And until next time, I'll catch y'all later.